Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to talk about the biology of Sesamia inferens, which is commonly called as pink stem borer. It is a serious pest of wheat in India. Wheat, as you know, is one of the most important cereal crops and it is a major source of carbohydrate and plant protein. It may not supply all the essential amino acids, but it still remains a good source of protein for us. Wheat is cultivated and consumed worldwide and Triticum estivum is the most common species that is cultivated. Although there are some other species that belongs to genus Triticum which are cultivated in different parts of the world. Wheat belongs to family Poesi which also includes plants like grass, rice, maize, millet, sugarcane, etc. Like we do for all pests, here also, we will start with the systematic position or taxonomic status of Sesamia inference. Then we will see how we can identify this pest and its distribution. We will talk about its habits, life cycle, the ways in which it can cause damage to our crops and the measures that can be taken to control this pest. So let's begin with the systematic position. Sesamia inferens belongs to phylum Arthropoda, subphylum Uniremia, class Insecta, subclass Terigota, division Endopterigota, order Lepidoptera, family Noctuidae, genus Sesamia, and species Sesamia inferens. Order Lepidoptera includes all the moths and butterflies. Sesamia inferens is a moth, so of course it belongs to order Lepidoptera. Family Noctuidae includes many dull colored moths and it also includes many economically important pests. Sesamia inference is just one of them. To identify Sesamia inference, you can look at its color, which is dull in color. The fore wings are brown and the hind wings are white. The thorax can also be white. A narrow fringe of hair lines both the wings. If you look from the dorsal side, you may not be able to see its head, which is often bent downwards. But if you look from the ventral side, then you will be able to see the head. And there are two very prominent black compound eyes on them and well-modified or well-developed labial palps. The females have simpler antenna and the males would have more elaborate antenna. Let's look at where we can find this pest. As you can see in this distribution map, although it has been reported from western parts, this pest is a major problem for Southeast Asian countries. In India, it is found everywhere, but it is more of a problem in South India. It is also found in countries like Pakistan, China, Japan, Indonesia, Philippines and adjoining and islands. So it is a major problem mainly for the crop in Asian countries. Let's talk about the habits of Sesamia inference. Although we are studying it as the serious pest of wheat, it can also cause damage to many other Poesi family plants like rice, sugarcane, maize, millets, etc. If you look at literature, then you will see that Sesamia inference has been studied with respect to many different host plants. Sesamia inference is a stem borer, so it feeds on the stem tissue and it can also feed on the base of the panicle. It burrows up and down in a plant and comes out, when, once it is done with one plant, it comes out and it can also attack the neighboring plants. That way, it not only damages one plant, but can also damage multiple plants. In winter, it hibernates in the larval stage. Let's look at the life cycle. We know that in the life cycle of Lepidopteran insects, we would find the four stages like adults. The females would lay the eggs after mating and the eggs would hatch into larva. In this case, we call them caterpillars. And once the larva matures, it will pupate and from the pupa, the adult will eclose. In case of Sesamia inference, the egg takes about 7 to 10 days to hatch into larva. 
The larva takes 20 to 30 days to mature and molds 6 to 7 times. And after it becomes pupa, the pupa takes 8 to 10 days to mature into adult stage. The whole life cycle takes about 40 to 70 days and there can be two to three generations and according to some literature there can be more than two to three uh, generations like four to five generations in a year. It actually depends on the climate. As you saw that sesamia inference has been reported from many different parts of the world particularly in Asia. So if the climate is colder then they then this pest will have fewer generations and it will take longer to develop and if the climate is warmer then it will take short it will have a shorter lifespan and it will have more generations in a year let's look at different life cycle stages the eggs are laid in two to three rows on the inner surface of the leaf sheath of the host plant. Be it wheat, be it rice, it is always the eggs are laid on the inner surface of the leaf sheath. The eggs are rounded with flattened folds. You can see they kind of look like oranges. They have two flattened folds. They are pale and yellowish green in color. Although here it looks whitish, they can also be yellowish green. And these eggs are also ridged, if you see more attentively. The larvae after hatching bore into the stem and feed upon the tissues of the stem. So let's look at the larva. The caterpillars or the larva which emerge from the egg, they will directly bore into the stem of the wheat plant if it is attacking the wheat plant and it will feed into the stem tissues. They do not feed the exposed part of the plant, they only feed inside the stem as well as they can also feed the base of the panicle. The caterpillars take 20 to 30 days to become mature and it molds 6 to 7 times. The mature larva measures 20 to 26 millimeters and it is pale yellowish in color with a purple or pink tinge. This purple or pink tinge gives it the name the purple stem borer or the pink stem borer. The pink stem borer is the most common name but it is also sometimes called the purple stem borer. You can see this is a caterpillar because along with three thoracic legs you can see the abdominal pseudo legs on 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th and 10th abdominal segment. The larva when it matures then it will pupate. The pupa is optic type which means that it will secrete a secretion all over its body which will harden and it will make all the appendages glued to the body and uh, this is the pupa. The pupa generally is found inside the stem tissue but it can also be found outside the plant. The adults have stout body and dark straw or light brown in uh, brown color. I have already talked about its identifying features before so I am not going to repeat that and I am going to move on to how it can cause damage to the crops. If we study from the perspective of wheat plants, then there are two very common symptoms that we can find when there is a sesamia inference attack. Since it attacks the stem tissue, as a result, the growing point of the plant dies. And you can see that from a dry central shoot. This symptom is known as the dead heart. Now the larva will burrow up and down inside the plant. So you will see the holes in the stem which the larva uses to get inside the stem as well as when it burrows up and down you will see the frass outside the stem. Now if the sesamia inference feeds at the base of the panicles then you will see the wilted panicles which is commonly known as the white ear head symptom. So, if there is a sesamia inference attack, you will first be able to identify it with the dead heart symptom as well as if the plants are matured, then you will see the white ear head symptom. 
and you will also find these holes on the stem and the frass accumulated outside the stem. Let's see how we can control this pest. We can use either cultural method or chemical method or biological method. For cultural method, the infected plants, which can be very easily identified by the dead heart symptom, should be taken out and they should be destroyed. However, if you have a very large field, then this method may not be feasible. After harvesting the crop, the stubble should be collected and destroyed. Usually in India, the stubbles are burnt to avoid the hibernating larvae inside the stubbles. Rotation of crop is also advisable. You can also use chemical methods. You can apply BHC and, and GDT, which are organochlorine pesticides. But you can also use phenethion, phenytruthion, quinefloss, uh, phosphamidon, etc., which are organophosphates. But sometimes carbamates are also advised to be used and there are many different chemical methods which are used according to the host plant and according to the place and according to the pesticides which are uh, allowed to be used in that part of the world. Biological methods can also be used to control sesamia inference. We have identified different parasitoids which can parasitize egg larvae as well as pupae and you can find their names here. So using biological methods, we can avoid the chemical methods or we can avoid the chemical pesticides, but it requires more research to use them more efficiently. Let's recap the whole lecture. Sesamia inference belongs to order Lepidoptera and family Noctuidae. It is a light brown moth and it has a pinkish caterpillar which gives it the name pink stem borer because caterpillar is the stage which bores into the stem and burrows up and down. For habits, it damages the crop in larval stage. The adult is not destructive but the larva is the most destructive stage here and it can hibernate in winter. For life cycle, the uh, pest would have the egg, caterpillar, pupa and adult stages. Caterpillar, as I said before, is the most destructive one and because of its color, gives it the name pink stem borer. You can identify there is an attack of sesamia inference by looking at the dead heart and the white ear head symptom. If you pick up a plant which is showing the dead heart symptom or which has the central shoot dry and dried and dead, then you can just open the stem and there is a huge chance that you would find a pink stem borer larva inside that plant. For controlling this pest, we can use either the chemical or cultural or biological methods. Hope you like this video. Please come back for my next video. Thank you.